I am here again with the fine folks at Fishman doing another Fishman takeover. My Fishman riff rundown guitar lesson every Saturday. It's good stuff here. Today we're going to be learning Ray LaMontagne's Jolene. So before I get started here, folks, let me know where you're tuning in from and let me know a song that makes you cry. Where you're tuning in from and a song that makes you cry. Here's a tune we'll be learning today. There's a little taste of what we'll be learning today. Again, Ray LaMontagne's Jolene from his debut album called Trouble. Recorded at Sunset Sound in Hollywood, by the way, which I think is super, super cool. My band and I just did a super fun video there, so you can check that out later after this lesson. But yeah, really, really iconic, iconic studio. Absolutely beautiful song. Again, this is geared to my beginners and intermediates, but again, my advanced guys and gals, you can learn some cool stuff from this too today. And again, you guys know the drill. We're going to take this really, really nice and slow. So again, those of you tuning in, let me know where you're tuning in from and a song that makes you cry. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. So with this tune, we have at the very, very beginning is a G chord that looks like this. Very different from some that perhaps we've learned in past lessons, okay? So here's how we're going to do this. Your third finger... We're going to place that on the third fret of the E string and your pinky finger, we're going to put that on the third fret of the E string as well on the, on the high E string. We are playing two G notes here. Okay. So keep this in mind. Those are our roots. Okay. And here's how we're going to go and play it. Place those fingers there. What's really interesting here is you're going to strum every single string, but check it out. The way that we are gripping with our third finger here. Okay. On that third fret of the E string, it's going to mute that A just like that, because we don't want that note, because that A note is not in this G chord, okay? The three notes that make up a G chord, again, are G, B, and D, okay? So that A string, not invited to the party, so we're not gonna play it, we're gonna mute it, all right? So we've got that. Now, you're gonna go ahead and strum that open D string, again, our five, cool, check that off the list. The open G string, another root, cool. And the B note, that's our third. So we have all three of those notes that we need to make this G chord in a grip that maybe looks a little bit new and different for some of you guys. So that's what we're gonna do. Now, again, we're gonna strum every single, every single string here. Say that five times fast. <laughs> so we're gonna do this. Just like that, okay? So just like that, that's all we're gonna do here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the C over G chord. So all that is, you're gonna place your first finger, we're gonna place this on the first fret of that B string, that note is C, C is in cat. The G string will remain open here. Your second finger is gonna go on the second fret of the D string, that's E. 
E is an elephant. So those three notes, C, E, G, make up your C chord, okay? And we have this G in the root here, so we call it a C over G, okay? And folks are asking here, hey, is this an alternate tuning? No, we are in standard tuning, but doesn't it sound nice and beautiful and big and open? Some great sounding chords here. All right, so what we're gonna do here, nice and slow, guys, you know the drill with these lessons. Nice and slow, we take our time. We cannot play anything fast that we can't play slow. So take your time, take your time, enjoy the process, okay? Enjoy the process. So here we go, nice and slow here. We're gonna be switching in between that G and that C over G. Like with our first finger and second finger, think about this, it kind of looks like an A minor seven. Or not kind of, it does. It looks like an A minor seven chord, okay? So we're gonna hammer on, release, G chord, place it down, C over G. And again, take your time here. This, this can be a little bit of a, a, a chord that can be a little tough on the hands for my beginners, but take your time with it, keep at it, it's gonna sound great, all right? So here we go, nice and slow here. And just back and forth with those two. And keep that first finger and that second finger hovering over the fretboard. Okay, nice and slow. Take your time, we'll do this for a few more moments here. So that's what's happening there. Let me make sure, good, my mic's on. Just making sure the mic's on, perfect. All right, so that's what's happening there. Again, a good hand stretcher of a chord. So really exercise those hands. We're definitely gonna need this one today, all right? So, just like that. Yeah, I got folks saying sounds like wild horses. Yeah, a lot of similarities between this Ray LaMontagne tune and wild horses for sure. Really, really beautiful, beautiful tune. All right, so we've got that down. The G to our C over G. Now, those of you who watch these lessons know me. I like my cool suspension chords. They add nice color to regular chords that we may know, right? So here's something that I do when I play this. And when I listen back to the track, I hear that perhaps Ray is doing a little bit of this too. Okay, so let's have a listen here. See how I released my second finger? I'm gonna go ahead and do that again. I'm gonna play it a little slower here so you can really hear that suspension happening. Hear that? So release that second finger. Again, think of it as a level two. If you find it's a little too tough right now, no worries, work up to it, okay? So now let's incorporate that into this. Hammer it back on, release G chord. Let's do this a few more times. So that's the intro there. And again, slow and steady wins the race here. You can't play anything fast, you can't play slow. Just take your time, take your time. All right, let's see where some folks are tuning in from today. We got Serbia, we got Brazil, we've got Finland, we've got Sicily. Oh, I love, we got Denmark in the house. I see San Diego, I see Austin, I see Nashville. Thank you all so, so much for being here. This is great. Again, those of you just tuning in, let me know where you're tuning in from, and a song that makes you cry. Let me know. I know this is one of them slows for me. I love this song. It's, a, it's quite a tearjerker. It's great. So right there, that is the intro of the song. All right, so work up to it, my beginners. Again, slow and steady. Stretch those hands. You'll be in good shape, I promise. All right, so now let's go ahead and go on to the verses here. So what's happening in the verses? What we've got here, G and C, for the most part, 
We're going to see a sneaky G7. We'll talk about that when it comes up. And we're going to have a D over F sharp. Nice slash chord. A cool one that we see quite a bit. But again, when it comes our way, we'll talk about it. Okay. So here we go here. When we go to the verse, I like to play the regular G chord here. So those of you who are like, what, what regular G chord does she like? This is the one that I like. First finger, put that on the second fret of your A string. That is the B note. That is our third, okay? We're gonna go ahead and get our second finger. This time, put on the third fret of the E string. That is G. Our third finger, place that third fret B string. B as in boy, that is our D note. That is our five, okay? Pinky finger goes right underneath it. G, third fret E string. So we play it, it should sound like this. Nice, big, open-sounding G chord here. Could you play it with that open B string? You sure could. It's a little more honky-tonk, a little more country. I like to have that fifth on the bottom. That is just my ear in most cases, but if you prefer the other G chord, go for it, okay? So. So let's go ahead and get started on that verse. We're gonna switch between G and C. This is the G I'm going to use, our C chord. I think a lot of us already know already. I won't get into that. But let's just go and switch back and forth from that G to C. So that cocaine flame in my bloodstream. Just like that. That is the switch we're looking for here, okay? We're gonna hold on to that G. Back to C. Now notice what I did there. I added a suspension there. I added a C sus too. All that is, name may sound a little scary. Don't worry, it's not too bad. What you're gonna do here is you're gonna lift up that second finger. Again, what are we doing here? We're playing the open D string. That is our two in the key of C. So that's why we call it a sus two, because that D is there. And then you go and hammer it back on. So it would be like this. Adds really, really beautiful, beautiful movement, beautiful melody within the chords already. So again, instead of just playing the chord, just adding in that suspension with that C chord can be a really cool thing to do. All right, and it's something that I know I do a ton and I've seen Ray Lantane play a bunch in concert. He does it a lot too as do many other guitar players. So it's a good little tool to put in your toolbox, something to think about. Again, my job with these lessons is to, you know, help you guys play, just plant the seeds, help you find your own voice as a player, okay? So that's what's happening there. Again, this is where we can make a really simple chord progression sound a little bit more sophisticated by adding in those suspensions, okay? So let's go ahead and do that again. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna play it slow, including the intro, into that first bit of the verse, and then I'm gonna play it to speed, okay? And again, thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. Getting, getting lots of good, God, we got someone in the Caribbean tuning in. I hope it is beautiful there, that is awesome. All right, here we go, folks. From the top, intro, nice and slow, take your time. Here we go. that again. Now our verse. that that first bit of the verse we're gonna go back to that figure playing our G chord in this way third finger on the third fret of the E string pinky finger third fret of the E string to our C over G okay let's go ahead and do that one more time a little faster 
All right, so here we go. Intro through the verse, first part of the verse. Not too bad. Again, we cannot play anything fast. We can't play slow. So take your time here. Take your time. All right. So what we've got here for the second part of the verse, what happens is we're going to go ahead and maintain this G chord grip to our G over C. Okay. So we're going to maintain that there. The part where he goes, lately my hands they don't feel like mine. Right there, that part, we're going to keep those two. All right, we're gonna keep those two fingers there. And again, play that G over C, okay? So we're gonna do that. After that bit, we're gonna go ahead and have a G7 chord be played there. Adds a really nice, cool texture, okay, to this chord progression. So how we would play this G7, there's a bunch of different ways. For my ear, it sounds like he's playing it here to me. So I tell a lot of my online students when we get to a G7 chord, think of it as a C chord that was expanded, right? Both sides of the C chord are expanded. I'll show you what I mean. So for my beginners, a good way to think about how to get to that G7, go ahead and play a C, okay? Then what you're gonna do is this. This is what I mean by expanding. Get that second finger and that third finger. Bring it up to the G, third fret E string, Bring, bring your second finger up to the B note, A string, second fret, first finger, bring it down to that F, first fret, E string, okay? So when we play it, we play all of the strings. And if you notice, you can't see my thumb right now. It's because my thumb is in the middle of the neck setting the foundation for this chord here. So again, that's another big thing with having good technique. We really, really want to make sure that our fingers are in the right place. They're curled, they're close to the frets without touching them, all of that good stuff. Things that we want to think about when we're doing this, okay? So that's what we want there. So that's your G7. At least to my ear, this sounds like the one that he's using. Okay, so that's how we get there. So a G7, what are the notes that we're playing? We are playing a G. We are playing a B, we are playing a D, we are playing an F. That's the flat seven. That's the note we meet, need to make our seventh chord. Okay, so just like that. After we play this G7 chord, we're gonna go ahead and go back to C. And then our lovely C suspensions, cause why not throw them in? And then go back to a regular G chord. We're gonna stop right there for the verse. There's gonna be a little bit of a walk down. We're gonna talk about it when we get there. Now, what I'm gonna do, since we've talked about that, that G7, how to build it, do it going into our C sus two chords. I'm gonna play this again from the top. Take your time with me, okay? We're gonna do that and we're gonna get to that final G chord before we go into that walk down, okay? So I'm gonna do it slow and then I'm gonna go ahead and play it just a tad bit faster. And again, thank you so much everybody for tuning in. My name is Angela Petrilli, here with the fine folks at Fishman doing another Fishman Takeover riff rundown guitar lesson. Live, folks, no edits here, no edits. We're doing it live, live from Los Angeles, California, beautiful Los Angeles, California. So here we go, from the top, nice and slow, follow along.
All right, so there we go. That's it slowed down a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and play it to speed now. And follow along if you can, here we go. that's it. That's our intro. That's our first verse right there. Done. Okay. So again, not too bad. Take your time with this. Okay. These stretches, particularly that intro can be a little tricky, but take your time with it. Slow and steady. I cannot stress it enough. I almost want to get a shirt. Slow. Can't play anything fast. You can't play slow. So take your time. Also too, I'm sure you've noticed here with the right hand, when we are strumming here, let the pick do the work. For you. Let the pick do the work for you. Don't think that you need to be super aggressive with this right hand. If you notice, see how I'm swinging and strumming using this, the, the, the pivot of the strum is coming from the elbow. I'm not strumming with my wrist. Some people do and that's totally okay. I just talk about my, how I like to do things. I am strumming from the elbow here. Okay. Nice and light. Let the pick do the work for you. Don't think that you need to dig because you don't. Cause again, picks are the cheapest amplifiers that you can buy. So let the pick do the work for you. Let them just lightly graze over the strings. Okay. Particularly for a song like this, we don't want to have a big aggressive strumming happen in here. We don't need that. Okay. Nice and light. Let the pick do your, do the work for you. Okay. So think about that. Don't overthink the right hand too much. We want to be strong and steady, full of good intention when we are going through and strumming, okay? Another good thing too, a lot of folks ask, particularly my, my students. So what I say is this, when you're focusing on a right-handed technique such as strumming, okay? We want to keep the left hand really easy. So a song like this, heck, even just go ahead and do this and just practice your strumming nice and light. Okay, and start to build the finesse and build the timing and all of that stuff. So keep the left hand as easy as possible when you're focusing on right hand technique. Okay. So again, this is, this is a live Q and A as well. So those of you who have questions about stuff, please, by all means, I'd love to answer some of your questions. Also too, I see that some folks are asking about the guitar I'm playing and some of the gear. So let's go ahead and get to that real quick while I let these questions come in. I am playing my beloved Martin Triple O 17 E in black smoke. It's a beautiful guitar. I love it. Mahogany back and sides, spruce top. Sounds nice and great. Super fun to play. Really easy playable neck too, which I like. I've got the Matrix VT Enhanced Pickups by Fishman in here. They always sound good. Nice and clear. It's great. What I am going through here as far as a DI acoustic imager, the silver box, you guys hear me talk about the Aura Spectrum DI acoustic imager. I play a ton of acoustic gigs. I've, with this pedal, which I believe I have had close to eight or nine years by now, I bring this to every single acoustic gig that I play. I do not leave the house without it. I am going through that right now. I absolutely love it. Anytime I go to a venue and I walk in with that, the sound people are like, thank you so much because you make their job easier too. Because this thing makes the guitar sound as it should, which those of you know, when you buy an acoustic guitar, you buy an acoustic guitar because of how it sounds in the room and how it envelops the space and the air and all of that good stuff. So I've found with this R Spectrum DI, it just allows the guitar to sound as it should in a live setting, which, yay, is just 
good stuff. It is just good stuff. As far as amplification, I'm also going through one of those, okay? I'm going through a Fishman Loudbox Performer amp. They are awesome. I absolutely love them. They kick butt. They are loud. They are called Loudbox for a reason. They are very, very loud, but again, allows the acoustic instrument to sound as it should. It's got two different inputs. You can go ahead and mess around with those. It's really, really fun. There's all sorts of reverbs, delays, all the cool stuff they got in here. They got flange, if that's your thing, on an acoustic gig. Cool, awesome, you do you. It's really great stuff, so I like it. I've got it mic'd up with an SM57, then going into Logic out to all of you fine folks all over the world. So that's what I am going through right now. It's good stuff. Okay, so when it comes to some of your questions, let's go ahead and See, all right, we got Anaheim Hills in the house. Very, very cool, love it. Um, have you played an OM and why do you prefer the triple O? I actually do have an OM as well. Um, that, I have an OM28 Martin, so OM28V. I absolutely love it too. It's a great acoustic guitar. I love, love, love to teach on this one. It's super easy to play. I, I love the neck on this with the bare wood. Just feels really good in my hands. Um, and yeah. It's just really fun stuff, folks. It's just really, really fun stuff. Okay, so let's see. Ah, uh, yes, don't worry. Flint is asking about Led Zeppelin lessons. Yes, there will be more in the future. Don't worry. I've got a few ready to go for you guys. All right, so let's see. Let's go ahead and now go to this walk down that happens at the end of the verse, okay? So here's what's happening here. We've got this. We're going to be coming from our G chord to a D over F sharp. This is how I play it. I use my thumb. So this may be a little uncomfortable for some of you. You could easily play it this way too. If that's a little bit better for me, I like to use my thumb. Those of you who have been following me for a while know that I am a, a blues guitar player and a lot of times we like to use our thumb with chords. So. I like to use my thumb there, but by all means, I'll show you both ways how to play this. So what you can do, if we're gonna go in the thumb route, place your thumb on the second fret of that E string. That is your F sharp. And that's the slash part of our F over F sharp, okay? So that's our F sharp as our bass note, okay? So that's what that means. Then you go ahead and play your D chord just like regular, like if the thumb wasn't even there, okay? So, so all you're doing is just that, okay? So when switching to that G chord, we'll go to an E minor in a second. Okay, so see that the move, see how the thumb is like kind of already there. Like, hi, give me a job, please. <laughs> go and put it there. All right, so think about that. That's one way that I like to do it. Um, let's see here. So as far as the other version of playing this, D over F sharp, you could do this way. First finger, go ahead and place that on the second fret of that E string, the F sharp, okay? Your second finger, place that on the A note, second fret G string. Your third finger on the F sharp, second fret E string. Pinky finger goes to the D, third fret B string. So you can do that too. So that's two ways. I like this one. So, so there we go. So that's what's happening there, okay? So now what we wanna do next, G, D over F sharp. That brings us into our chorus, okay? So just like that, okay, not too bad. Let's go ahead and go over this. Walk down, D over F sharp, E minor. Simple chords. Maybe if, for those of you using the thumb, it might be a little weird, but again, take your time with it, all right? So here we go. G, D over F sharp to E minor, nice and slow. We're gonna do this a few times. Again. What also may help too here, keeping your third finger, okay? This pivot point here, your third finger when playing the G chord, as well as playing the D chord are in the same exact spot. So why lift it up if you're just gonna put it right back in the same place, right? Wanna keep this nice and easy for you. Good, fluid playing here. Keep in mind with those pivot points, it can help you a lot, all right? Keep 
Leave that there. E minor, good. Let's go ahead and do this a few more times. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play the verse. And I'm going to include that walk down at the very end. I'm going to do the second half of the verse. Okay. So here we go. beautiful how he does that it's great I'm gonna do it one more time so you can hear it from the top of the second part of the verse here we go That's what's happening there. And again, if you guys haven't heard the song by Ray LaMontagne, this song will make you cry. His voice just like, oh, he's an American treasure as far as I'm concerned. He's awesome. Okay, so when we get to that verse, that E minor is leading us right in verse chorus. That E minor is leading us right into that chorus, okay? So with Jolene, right when that name comes in, regular old trusty G chord. Yes, okay? Now we're gonna do C, regular old C chord. We're gonna go back to G, we're gonna do our walk down again. G, D over F sharp, E minor, okay? And then we go back to G, to C, all right? So that's where we're gonna leave it off here. I'm gonna play that chorus a few times, varying speeds. Follow along. Again, my name is Angela Petrilli. Here are the folks at Fishman doing a riff rundown guitar lesson of Ray LaMontagne's Jolene. Okay, so here what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and do this chorus at varying speeds. Let's do this. From the walk down from the, the back of the verse. Do that one more time from the tag at the end of that verse. Now, something else I want to mention too, for perhaps my if you want to bump this up to a level two, my intermediates, my more advanced folks watching today, feel free to add that C suspended in here too. Give this a little bit more movement if you'd like. I'm going to go ahead and play it that way so you can hear the difference too. So here we go. From the walk down. again. See what I mean? Cool thing to throw in. So something, something to think about folks, something to think about doing again. Big fan of those suspensions. Big fan, big fan. All right. So now we're going to go to this, I guess you can call it a second verse. Okay. So Here's how that looks. We're gonna go back to the G chord looking like this. Third finger at the third fret of the E string, pinky finger, third fret, E string, both G notes. Mute that A string. It'll sound better, I promise. Okay. <laughs> 
we're gonna go back to that C over G, hammer on with that first finger, second finger. Okay, just like that. Okay, we practiced that a bunch at the top of the lesson. So again, really, really being very intentful, getting those fingers to hammer on right where they need to be. If you happen to hit a fret, you're gonna get some buzz, some thudding sounds. So really be mindful when you are doing this. Even if you need to look at your hands for the first few times to get more comfortable and see, okay, that's where I need to lift and then that's where I need to land. Okay, because again, we want really good, good, clear sounding chords. When we get a little messy and then we learn a song messy, our brain is like, oh, that's how I'm supposed to play it. So again, that's why I always say slow and steady. Can't play anything fast, you can't play slow. All right, so really, really take your time with this. Really, really take your time. Again, good technique, good technique. Speed will come later, I promise. Good technique, we're starting these off, all right? So the part I found myself face down in a ditch with booze in my hair and blood on my lips, that's the part we're at right now. Now, we're gonna get a little relief from this grip, okay? We're gonna go ahead and play a regular D chord. Thank God, there we go, regular old D chord, okay? So, let's go ahead and do the top from there, getting some relief from that D chord at the very, very end. So here's the top of that second verse. Now we're gonna go back to C. Why not? Back to G. Okay. So, again, the order of those chords. G. C over G. Back to G. D chord. Gonna hold that D chord for a little bit there. C chord's coming up next. Play the C chord. Add a C suspension if you want. Then to our regular G chord. Okay. I'm gonna break that down nice and slow. Play it at varying speeds and follow along, folks. Here we go. Top of the second verse. sure some of you noticed or asked yourselves can I do a D suspension can I do that yeah you totally can here's how it sounds if you do that D suspension you're gonna lift up that first finger it's gonna sound like this right so if I play it a little faster see what it does to that chord you're opening that G note then landing on a that's what's happening there. It's beautiful. One of my favorite chords to play. So here's what's gonna happen here. I'm gonna play that regular D chord this next time we go and, and, and do this, this second verse, but I'm gonna add that suspension too and I encourage you guys, you're only lifting up the first finger and bringing it back down. You can totally do this. You can totally do this, all right? So let's try it together. I'm gonna play it slow, then I'm gonna bring up the speed. Here we go, folks. Happy playing, let's do this. us. All right, let's do that again. Notice how light to the touch the right hand is here. Light to the touch. Let the pick do the work for you. Let's do that one more time. We're going to go back to the, the next half of the second verse. So here we go. One more time here. A little faster. Not too bad, guys. You can do this. You can do this. Take your time. 
you can do this. Again, good technique, making sure the chords, we are playing them appropriately, fingers are curled when they need to be, we are pressing hard enough, we are close to the fret without touching them, and just make sure your finger's in the right place. That usually ensures that you're playing the right chord. There you go. The more you know. Okay, so let's see here. So, in the pocket of my blue jeans is the last part of that line. So, in the pocket of my blue jeans, there it is again, it came back. So that G to D over F sharp, use the thumb if you want to, that's what I do, and then E minor, okay? So that's gonna lead us to the second half of this verse, okay? So, so in the pocket of my blue jeans, I still don't know what love means. Right there. G and C, easy chords, okay? Easy chords. So, again, G, D over F sharp, E minor, back to G and C. Here we go. Back to our E minor, G to C. Okay, then we're gonna have another really awesome walk down, which I really love, I think it's beautiful. And I'm sure you guys will recognize this because this sort of walk down we see in so much music and he does it here too. Okay, so we've got that E minor, G and C happening two times, okay? Happening twice. So here we go again, we're gonna do that varying speeds. Let's make it happen folks, here we go. that again maybe for the C chord let's add a C suspension why not back to G C C sus2 one more time forceful but but in, in a delicate sort of way okay when you're when you are pressing when you have that suspension bringing it back to the major really make sure you press because if you're too uh, if you're too delicate with it you can get that kind of sound we, we don't want that not a good C chord good strong note okay so that's what's happening there. Then we have another walk down here. It looks and sounds like this, but don't worry, we'll talk it through. Let me do that a little cleaner. Here we go. Let me do that even cleaner. That's all that's happening there. It looks like a lot of stuff with the hands. are like, oh my gosh, not too bad, promise. Here's what we do here, C chord. I think we all know how to play it. I won't go into the logistics of that one. Okay, so G over B is gonna be the next chord here. You might be thinking, oh gosh, how do I play this? Sounds hard, it's not. What you're gonna do, think of the regular G chord here. Okay, the one that we've been talking about, the one that I like to use. All right, all you're gonna do, is just lift up your middle finger, just like that. This B now becomes your root, okay? Because these strings down here, they already have the G, B, and D, the three notes you meet, need to make your G chord, they're already taken care of on this bottom side of the guitar, okay? But we're having this B here as the root. That's why it's a G slash B, okay? So right there. So that's all you do. G chord, lift. Play the bottom five strings. That's it, okay? So that's how we play that chord. That is how we play that chord today, folks. Okay, it's like the G chord without the G root. It's B instead. Okay, so just like that. So C chord, G over B to A minor. It's a fast switch, but that's okay. 
we play things slow first before we play them fast. So let's go ahead and do that again here. I'm just gonna go from C to G over B to A minor. Then what happens here is then we go backwards. Then we're gonna go A minor, G over B, C. And then we're gonna do C, B, G over B, A minor. So we're gonna do that back and forth. I'm gonna do this for a few moments here at varying speeds. Take your time, all right? So here we go. Slower. There you go. Take your time. Now to speed so we can get the context of this from the top of that part of the verse. So that's what's happening there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and play everything we've done so far, because for the most part, guys, we've learned the tune. Yay, it's pretty much these three parts, all right? So I'm gonna play it from the top. I'm gonna do a pass slow. I'm gonna do a pass a little faster, and then I'll do a, a pass to speed. Now, again, this is a live Q&A so, or Q &A show too. There we go, <laughs> It's been a long week, folks. Okay, so if you have questions, all of that good stuff, type them in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to them and I'm gonna answer as many of them as I can with the time that we have left. Again, my name is Angela Petrilli. If you guys are having fun and enjoying these, be sure to give the folks at Fishman a follow on your social medias, your YouTubes and Instagram and Facebook and all of that good stuff. They've got some great stuff happening right now. I am honored to be alongside some really, really great players that are on their YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe. They got some good stuff happening. And you can follow me on the Instagrams, Angela Petrilli Music, on YouTube, on Facebook, Twitter. And you can visit my website, AngelaPetrilliMusic.com. I'm going to be playing some shows in July, too, some live shows. So those of you who are in Southern California, visit my website and see if I'm going to be playing near... You, also, my band, Angela Petrilli and the Players, will be coming back September 8th in Los Angeles, but I'm not going to say the venue yet. So mark your calendar, September 8th, 2021, going to be playing in L.A. with my rock band. It's going to be a blast. Going to be playing some Cream, so I'm going to leave it at that. Cream, ah, some Neil Young, what else is on that set list? Some Fleetwood Mac, it's going to be good stuff. So keep Keep up to tabs, visit my website, angelspatrillimusic.com. Okay, so I'm gonna do the whole tune that we have learned so far. Slow, medium, fast, here we go.
seven. Walk down. Verse two. D chord. do it a little faster. I'm not even gonna do the medium one. I'm just gonna do it a little faster because this is already a pretty slow song for the most part. So here we go. Seven. So that, for the most part, folks, is the tune. We're going to have another verse that comes in after that. And again, I'll play that quickly right here. It's just going to be a G chord to our G7. Back to C. And again, throw in those susses when you can. Very similar to that first verse that we did, okay? Same chord structure, the whole thing. We have those walk downs. Again, that happened. The G, D over F sharp, B e minor, to G, to C. Back to our G, D over F sharp, E minor. So 
it's really cool stuff. Again, this lesson was geared to my beginners, my intermediates here, but again, my advanced students, I'm sure you can take away a couple things here too. And also, like I'm sure you noticed in some parts where I was and didn't get in time to switch back to this regular G chord, you can still play this one, it's okay, because we still have those three notes that make up the G chord, okay? So again, totally cool. Totally cool too. We're still using the same three notes, but isn't that neat? Just different inversions and stuff. It's really great, super fun, super fun. So we've got a few minutes here. Would love to take a few of your questions and also too, those of my late, comers are coming to this. Don't worry, this is gonna be on YouTube. You can go and rewatch this anytime. Be sure to follow the folks at Fishman, subscribe to their channels. You can subscribe to mine as well, Angela Petrilli Music and Fishman Transducers as well. So yeah, again, you can go, you can watch, you can rewind, you can pause, all of that good stuff. This is a song you can learn how to play. I promise, I promise. I, I, I pick songs that I really like myself and I listen, Raylan Montaigne is probably one of my favorite songwriters of all time. And this is just a beautiful song of his that I was getting many, many requests for from a lot of you. So really happy to be able to teach this one to you guys today. Yes, I'm getting comments about strumming. Again, slow, with intent, let the pick do the work for you. Again, I, I'm someone, and everybody's got their different ways that they grip guitar picks. Some people use two fingers, some people, or, or, or three fingers, and hold it like this, like that. There we go. Okay. Um, I'm someone who crosses my thumb and first finger like a T, and then put the pick in like that. So really, when I'm strumming, I'm only using just a very, very small portion of the pick. I think a lot of folks can think, oh my gosh, I have to hold a pick like this, and then strum this way. That's what happens when you hold it this way. It can flick right out of your hand, so that's why. And then they get lost in the black hole that is the, the that is an acoustic guitar, and you can never get them out again. Who's been there? I've been there. Um, so, so, so yeah, you want a firm grip with the guitar pick, but you don't want to squeeze the life out of it either, because then it's going to make you're going to hear the peaks and valleys of the strings, and that's something we definitely don't want. It doesn't particularly sound good, um, particularly in a song like this. So, really, really, really. Nice, light touch, the pick just glances over, okay? Don't be too aggressive. Now, if we were playing some like, you know, heavy metal or like punk rock and stuff, yes, you wanna be a bit more aggressive in your attack of the, of the strings, yes. But with the song like this, you don't. Nice, light touch, okay? Nice, light touch. Um, let's see, getting a lot of love from you guys. Thank you all so much. Glad you folks are enjoying it. I see Brazil is in here. I see Austin, Texas. Man, do I love Austin. Hoping to be back in the fall, I'll keep you guys posted on when that will be. We've got Liverpool. Yes, fine band came out of Liverpool. Thanks for tuning in. We got Fort Worth, Texas in the house. Glad you're enjoying the lessons, my friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in. And again, if you guys are enjoying the lessons, be sure to subscribe to the folks at Fishman and to myself, Angela Petrilli Music, on the YouTubes and Instagrams and Facebook and Twitter and all that good stuff. So yeah, um, it's it's... So such a blast teaching you guys. I have such a great time. These are so much fun. I enjoy these a bunch. I think I'm gonna do, I might do an electric one next week. Might do electric, might keep it acoustic. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I haven't decided yet, but really, really thankful to all of you for, for tuning in and, and glad these lessons are helping you learn and bring a little joy into the world. Cause again, music is super, super important, I think. And the more music we can put out, the better, I think. I think that's just me. I think it's good to, to put good positive energy in the world, especially in times like this. So I'm happy and honored to be able to spend my Saturday afternoon with all of you. This was Ray LaMontagne's Jolene. You can go. This will be on YouTube. You can go rewind, learn this. Even though it's a sad song, I know it'll bring you a lot of joy to play. And be sure to check out his music too. Ray's, Ray's pretty great. Ray's pretty great. Awesome, awesome musician and artist. He's just fantastic. Just fantastic. So yeah, folks, thanks again. And yeah, if you guys are in Southern California, I'll be playing some shows down here this July. So visit my website to check out where I'll be and hopefully I'll be near a town near, come, near you. Come by and say hello. 
and all of that good stuff. Again, it has been my absolute privilege and honor to be able to teach you guys today. Be sure to check out the folks at Fishman and all the awesome stuff they are doing. My name is Angela Petrilli. Oh, and I want to mention too, did a really fun video over at Norm's. I'm sure some of you recognize me from the Norman's videos. I just did a flat top for Friday episode and it was super fun. So you guys can go ahead and check that out. Uh, played a few tunes that I have taught here on the Riff Rundown. So you can go ahead and check it out there. Um, again, it is, it is truly an honor. Thank you all so, so much for tuning in. Week after week, it has been a joy seeing so many of you return and come back and have your acoustic guitars rearing and ready to go. So I, I, I thank you all very much for the kind comments and, and all of that. And uh, yes, I see Von Bluesman, screenshot of the Fishman pedals, please. Yes, visit my Facebook page. I will have links up for all of you there so you guys can see what I am going through and get yourself some of this awesome gear, just saying. I've been using it for many years, I really like it, I think it's great. Uh, again, thank you all so much, this has been an absolute blast. My name is Angela Petrilli, you can give me a follow. AngelaPetrilliMusic.com, all that stuff is there. Follow the fine folks at Fishman, they're doing really good things. Thankful to them for having me on here every week with all of you. It has been a joy and an honor and a pleasure. Thank you all so much, take good care, be safe, be kind, play a lot of music. I'll see you here, same time, same channel next week.